Anat, television is reporting today from uh, Oberhausen. It is the 22nd February 2014. And uh, the reason for us is an uh, interview with uh, Poupé Fabric, uh, who's playing at the Etropolis uh, Festival in 2014. Hello to Henrik and Leif. Hello. Hello. Thank you uh, uh, that you can uh, that you made this interview with us and uh, for your time spending. Um, how do you feel today and uh, how was your travel to Germany? Well, it was very nice. I say we came yesterday, so we had a day of just relaxing and you know doing nothing, feeling yeah. good. So um, okay. having a few beers, so we're in good shape, relaxed. perfect, relaxed, yeah. yeah, ready to do this. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you, 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 you were landing yesterday at uh, Düsseldorf? Yeah, Düsseldorf, yeah. yes. Yeah. Okay. So it's a short flight, one hour and 50 minutes or something, so it's, yeah. it's easy. Okay, yeah, yeah. fine. Uh, yeah, uh, Poupé Fabric is uh, today live on stage at the Etropolis Festival. Um, you've played last year in uh, December in Dessau. Uh, some impressions of it? From the Dessau? Okay. Yeah. Well, the guys in Dessau are kind of crazy, fanatic, uh, <laughs> very into the old school EBM thing. Uh, so it, it was a blast, you know, uh, perfect response, um, you know, great time. Uh, but it, at the same time, it's a kind of, kind of a small venue, it's a small club, so it's really intimate and small. I think today is a different thing when we, you know, it's a big stage, big audience. So it, it's going to be different from today, I think, but it's... Uh, you know, both both kinds of shows. You know, for the small club or for the big venue, they're yep. they're both interesting, yep. although different. But yeah, yeah. But you know, we're in good shape. We've been playing quite a lot in Sweden also this winter, uh, so uh, I think we're mm. we got it yeah. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you know, rehearsed and good now, so it's yeah. cool. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you've played in 2011 on Wave Guti Treffen and yeah. uh, uh, Alfred uh, this year too. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. That's also a different one. Uh, playing outside. I don't know. I don't, it hasn't been decided where we play this year, but we used to play outside on uh, Parkbean, I think it's called. Yeah. Uh, and that's also quite different when you're outside with a thousand people, you know, in the sun. It's not really. <laughs> Maybe not where I would choose to play, but still, it's it's fun also. Yeah. And Vigatea is a very fun festival because it's you know, it's so much more than just a festival. It's, it's a, yeah. I, I don't know how to describe it, but most of you guys already know what Vigatea is. So <laughs> it's it's crazy. It's fun. It's different. It's you know. Okay. You don't know the uh, the exact day when you're on stage. Uh, no. no. Okay. Not yet. No. Not yet. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's talk about your last release, um, the HATU EP, which has entered the DIC charts in December 2013. Um, well, uh, was it planned for you or uh, was it a uh, near surprise? That we entered the charts? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, it's. To be honest, I don't, I don't have so. much, uh, con you know, I'm not in touch with the duck shorts or whatever, so yeah. I, I don't know what it's all about really, yeah. uh, but I'm, I'm honored to be on a chart and yeah. it's interesting uh, that people like it enough to, because it's still kind of a, I mean we do our, our thing and it's kind of a, what do you say, niche, uh, you know, yeah. hardcore EBM, yeah. it's a small following, but still it may, manages to, to end up on a chart and it's, you know, I'm honored, it's nice, uh, <laughs> but it's it's not like I'm, I'm I'm celebrating, you know. It's it's just fun. It's good. It's thanks, you know. Yeah, it's, I, I think it's 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 the right time for for uh, old school EBM to get uh, to enter the charts, uh, just like the groups and uh, so on. Um, uh, um, let's talk about um, the EP and uh, your last uh, long player album, The Dirt. Um, the uh, the EP was uh, uh, a different thing between the Dirt and the EP, or, or was it planned? Well, we did two EPs actually from from the Dirt. First, we did yep. uh, Bring Back the Ways of Old EP, yeah. and then we did Hate You. Uh, so, uh, and to be honest with you, these uh, yeah, I understand the the need to release a single and everything, but I, I'm. 
personally, I don't really into. I'm not really into this remixing thing. You know, yeah. everything's need to be remixed ten times, and there should be fifty special versions. Blah blah blah. <laughs> really, fuck that if you ask me. <laughs> but you know, we have a label, and they think it's good for the promotion and da da da. So okay, fine. Yeah. Let people remix it, and we. Mm-hmm. This time we had a lot of uh, saying about who we wanted to remix it yeah. because we had a lot of people suggested to us mm. that should remix it. We said no, we don't think it's it's not it's not it's not our thing and it's, it's not going to be good and it's not going to you know. So we had a bit of a saying on what to choose, or what remixes to be to choose, yeah. and that made it better, I think, or at least manageable. But sure. uh, I do prefer the you know to release an album or. Uh, you know, without all the remixes and just you know focus on the songs as they are. Mm-hmm. So okay, it's interesting to hear someone else's uh, interpretation or, or version of something. Yeah. It's interesting, but in nine times out of ten, it's just not that interesting. The result is kind of boring, or you know. So I'm, I don't know. I'm maybe just old. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I don't know. But you know. Well, uh, so just like you said, you're old. Uh, uh, let's talk a little bit about the 80s. The 80s? <laughs> the 80s. <laughs> <Okay>. uh, <laughs> Fabric was founded in uh, 88. Um, uh, and uh, in, uh, the electronic body music was, uh, may I can say so, in the, in the kid's shoes. Yeah? And uh, Can you tell me some impressions of the 80s uh, f- uh, from the perspective of today? Well, it's a lot different. Yeah? Uh, I must say. I mean, mm. when, we, when we started out, we, we listened to, to Duff, Mitzedeb, you know, that kind yeah. of thing, obviously. Uh, but that was the only impressions we had. We had nothing else. Yeah. You know, there was no internet, nothing. I mean, so... Uh, Things were easier in a way, but there were still there wasn't that much, not that many bands, not that much buzz about it because there were, as I said, no internet. Yeah. Uh, there were fanatics and a few, you know, clubs and people who were really into making this, and uh, but it was very small yeah. and very spread out all over Sweden. I mean, mm. we did gigs, you know, in, in the south, in Malmo, and small land everywhere. You <laughs> know, uh, and north. And the north, yeah, yeah. Stockholm, yeah, and the north. <laughs> we did a north coast tour of Sweden, yeah, actually, yeah. fantastic. Um, but it was so spread out, and there was no communication, and there were not that many bands. And if you look today, it's like crazy. I mean, there are a million bands, a million copies of everything. There is a thousand labels, and yeah. just bzz, like that, total yeah. bust. So, it's. I think it's very hard today to find. To pick out the good stuff, really, yeah. and that's really a, a little bit about what the dirt is all about. Also, yeah. like bring back the way so old and everything. The message here is to, you know, really to be honest, we think a lot of the stuff that comes out today they have no balls. It's it's just rehashed crap. It doesn't give doesn't. As I said, I'm old and grumpy. Sorry, but but. <laughs> But still, it's, it, it doesn't give me anything. It doesn't have yeah. kuk, as you say in Swedish. Yeah. There are no balls in it. You know, so, <laughs> so, so, and that's why we like piss off, guys. I mean, if you want to do something, do it properly and yeah. have some balls, please. Yeah. And that's kind of what we what we try to come through with. You know, that today is just it's just too much of everything, and it's just copies of stuff, and it's without soul, without balls. That's. So that's a little bit what we're all about. Right? Yeah. Okay. It's like a comeback to say, "Fuck you, <laughs> you know, be a man, yeah. a woman, whatever." Yeah. Straight words. Yeah. So you have answered uh, uh, with this. Uh, my next question. Yeah. <laughs> so, but um, but uh, I've uh, got the uh, question about these. What you've said, uh, um, internet. Internet is it? Is it a blessing or a curse for you? I think it's both uh, ways, yeah. I think. It goes both ways. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you, you get out much wider, yeah. but you get out among a thousand other things. So yeah. it's it's that bus again, you know, the too much, too much everything. And I was actually, when we did The Dirt, when we did the album, I, I was thinking about, you know, okay, let's put this song first, and then yeah. we put that song, and then, you know, like, and then after a while I said, 
why do I care? People will not listen to this as an album. Well, a few will, but not many. Yep. People will pick a few songs they like in Spotify or somewhere, mm. <laughs> Pirate Bay, you know, and then they will listen to their favorite songs. People doesn't listen to an album. When we grew up, we had an album, you know, we listened to it from start to finish, and we kind yeah. of got the whole thing. Today, it's like, you know, you take a few. It's, people's attention span is very short. You're like, yeah. they're like a few things there, and they're going on to the next one. So it's, you know, it's a, it's a blessing and a curse. You're yeah. right there. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Okay. Um, let's. Uh, uh, I, I've got some question to the dirt. Um, you have. Uh, um, there are some songs that you have written in '88 to '90s, and you have re-recorded these. Um, yeah. What uh, what were your thoughts when you were uh, digging out the old songs and said, oh, yeah, okay, we're re-recording this, what were the ideas? Were they well, it was not that we were out of ideas to make all new stuff, but we felt like we wanted to set the record straight with our past, you know, and, you know, kind of take, because there are so, some songs, you know, Bright Light, um, well, a, a bunch of songs from, yeah. from, from the album. There are old songs that we never actually reco we recorded them. We did some demos, but we never yeah. released them on any album or anything. So, and some of these songs are dear to our hearts, and we think that you know they still capture the vibe of you know what we are about, our essence, our old you know the heritage, the, what we are, what we yeah. came from. So we said, okay, let's take these songs and redo them like we should have done them today, but use the old material and just you know bring it on again. Uh, so it's. We have nothing, nothing old in the past, you know, hidden. We are like an uh, open book. Everything is done. Yeah. All we did then is, is uh, you know, also, and also to show that, you know, you can do music uh, really simple, really, from, from, the, from the roots uh, and just, you know, make it interesting again. Yeah. Kind of. The next album we're, or we have started to work on now will be all new, new stuff then. But... Uh, you know, it felt good to kind of, it, that's also the title, the dirt, it's the old dirt, everything, you know, that we had. We just yeah. dug it up, recorded it and poof, let it out, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, life, what was your first instrument you've ever played? First <laughs> instrument, okay. Ball <laughs> uh, harpa. <laughs> Sorry. The first instrument, I, um, I got cheap sampler. My first instruments uh, very easy to use. The S10, yeah. the S10 Roland uh, yeah. S10 yeah. was, and uh, then I got uh, analog synth, uh, the Pro one, and uh, sampled and played uh, with uh, drum machines, mm -hmm. and uh, we made the songs in in. Uh, step sequencer on the Pro One, yeah. all the first songs, so just playing the keyboard, so... <laughs> no computers, no computers, no, no fancy no, stuff, just really no basic... sequences <laughs> or j just a simple one that, mm -hmm. that was in the keyboard. I think it was uh, two times uh, 20 steps in the sequencer. <laughs> really and, uh, stuff. and I played the keyboards like uh, uh, following the sequence. In okay. the songs, so I think uh, when we record a range, we have to do several uh, retakes because yeah. I just missed uh, yeah, okay. yeah. one <laughs> tone. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't <laughs> once. The whole song was not programmed. It no. was like you, you programmed the sequence, but not the actual, you know, changes Ups in the songs. And 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 uh, so we had to you know, you know, again, let's record. Play the sequence. Okay, start over again. So no, no, no whole tracks programmed. Nothing like today. You know, everything is programmed. Simple. You know, you do it and it's done. Yeah. Then we have to play. We actually played our songs. It's really yeah. Different times. Then we had a guy on drums playing, playing drums, real drums to the songs. Yeah. Henrik. Have you ever? What was your first instrument? Or maybe you were shouting just like? Uh, no, no. I, I, when Leif was getting his first instruments, you know, we were we were best friends all back then. Yeah. Uh, I also got into uh, getting instruments. So I bought a 
Roland SH101. Yeah. Uh, and I still miss it today. You know, I, I will probably one day buy one again because I really miss it. Um, so I, I had a, that it's one. Nostalgic. Yeah. <laughs> that was the first one I had. Yeah. But I don't remember what. Well, anyway, I realized my talent was to, to scream and shout instead. So I dropped that and you know focused on, on singing. Yeah. But I have the last ten years or so started buying synthesizers and you know getting back into making music myself. So, uh, but at that time I. I kind of realized that you know life is better to make bass lines and stuff like that. So I let him do that, and I, I can focus on the, the lyrics and singing. So. Mm. Okay, um, the lyrics uh, are impressed by different Real stuff. Life. I mean, there are, as I said, some of the new tracks are really a, like a anti-reaction against the the current status of of the scene. You know, I feel I feel there's. Not much stuff that is called EBM. I really hate the term EBM yeah. actually because the term EBM doesn't mean shit today. It, it did mean a lot back when we started, but today it's that, that's why we say we do EKM, which is like Körpermusik in Deutsch, yeah. Körpermusik in Swedish. Uh, because we, we are, I wouldn't say, okay, we are EBM maybe, but we are, we are EBM as we think EBM are, but we call it EKM instead. Yeah. Uh, because you know that that's what a one of the few a few a few of the tracks are against that really um, that the scene is kind of lost. Yeah. There is nothing of the of the old the old guard is, is, has died out. Kind of it's <laughs> like it's we and a few more bands. I, I will not say that every EBM band is shit because that's a lie right. because there are a lot of good bands, but. Yeah. There are also a million bad bands that really, you know, I, I wouldn't even call it EBM, but they do. So, you know, it's it's not the most important thing in the world, of course, but still, it's it's a topic that, you know, since we have been doing this so long, it feels like the scene has kind of taken off in ways that, you know, doesn't feel yeah. right, really. Mm. Um, so, but otherwise, I mean, my lyrics are I just write what comes to me. It's it's. Uh, you know, it can be anything really. I don't have yeah. any distinct. Uh, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna write about this or I'm gonna write about that. You know, it's been over the years. If you look up their albums, I mean, it's been. Uh, I've been talking about uh, singing about environment issues, uh, politics in not maybe open politics, but I mean, we're not a political band in any way. But I mean, yeah. there's been like criticism of the system and stuff like that. Really, yeah. uh, especially on we have come to drop bombs and stuff like that. Uh, a lot of personal feelings, you know, it's, it's a mixture. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, in, uh, in these times, uh, um, um, I, I think it's difficult uh, to uh, say some, some, some right words about politics uh, in the EU and so on. It's very difficult. Don't get me started. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, yeah, uh, uh, one personal question I ask every musician and uh, every artist, um, it's a personal question. If God were stand before you and would say, shit, I've painted with the mankind. Uh, Henrik, life, have you some tips for me to make something better? What would you answer? It's a lost course, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> lost course, <yeah. laughs> Kind of, uh, I don't know. It's like I feel sometimes I feel like that. So. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's still hope, but. but <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what is planned for next? Uh, uh, you said uh, that you're working on new stuff. Yeah. We're uh, gonna make a new album. Uh, I hope it will be done by, you know, after the summer. Mm. I don't know. We'll see. You know, uh, we have families and all that, uh, which it was different before. You know, in the '90s, we didn't have any kids, and uh, you know, it was. It was much easier to just do what you wanted, but now it takes more planning and stuff. But uh, I think, and I hope that we'll have an album ready by, yeah, after the summer. Mm. Uh, we have booked, well, we have VGT, of course. Yeah. Uh, Is there a chance to, to hear some new stuff on Wave Gotik Treffen? Or? Depends on if, <laughs> if it's maybe maybe maybe, maybe maybe we'll see okay. maybe maybe, maybe. Yeah. I will not promise anything it depends on the on the process but yeah, yeah. okay yeah. okay but that's uh, new material and hopefully some new gigs then after the summer we've been we haven't booked that much gigs now uh, because we want to focus on on uh, making music instead um, we did a lot of gigs as I said last year in, in Sweden and so so 
but we're going to focus on making a new, new album. That's the number one thing. Okay. Yeah. So, with the end, uh, all my questions were answered, and uh, we'll say, uh, wish you all the best for your gig this evening, and yeah. uh, break a leg. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, it's kind of funny you said that, because we've been breaking a lot of legs in our career. Uh, we really? have been, Yeah, we have. <laughs> we have been... It's true. We have been stage diving uh, onto people, and you know it doesn't show here, but we're quite big guys. Uh, <laughs> so I have broken a few arms and I think a leg, ribs. I have, uh, ribs. I smashed yeah. an elbow on a guy. Yeah. Uh, some people have been doing surgery afterwards. Um, you know, it's <laughs> so break, don't say break a leg because okay. it, it's, it might actually happen. You know, <laughs> so uh, hope you have. A great, yeah. wonderful gig <laughs> yeah. this evening, and uh, that you are not uh, getting hurt. No, so, <laughs> this evening I'm, I'm mostly hurt, scared for the audience. <laughs> actually, okay. You know, so. okay hope yes. uh, we see us at the Wave Coaching Treffen. Wish you all the best. Thank you very much for this interview. Thank, thank, you. You, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.